Welcome, my friends, to the vault. So the incident that has me posting this actually happened to me today, just a few hours ago. But there's a lot of what I believe to be related incidents, so bear with me. My store is haunted. Laugh if you will, but being an overnighter, I see plenty of fairly unexplainable events. I'm a reasonable person. Yes, I believe in many different supernatural entities. However, I'm also aware that physics is pretty weird in itself. If I can explain something away with logic, I will. It makes the weird things I do see, I don't know, less prevalent, therefore less creepy? I'm not sure. I just know, the less I see of the supernatural, the better off my day-to-day -day mindset is. Now, I've worked first, second, and third shift at my store. I've been there a depressingly long time for how short my life has been. The store and its employees are great, but retail is a bitch. I've only ever noticed the weird and creepy in the dark, quiet hours of the night, generally only when there's just the employees in the store. I don't know if it's because things like stuff flying off the shelves at random always seem to have a logical explanation when the store is crowded, or if it's because our ghosts only come out at night. Time of day seems like a ridiculous condition to impose on the dead. As previously mentioned, at night things like to fly off the shelves at random. On my very first week of full overnights, I remember hearing a very loud ruckus coming from the back of the store. I went to go look at what had happened to find one bottle out of a package of our nutritional shakes, broken and leaking everywhere at the opposite end of the aisle. Just for reference, that's a good 28 feet in difference. It was like someone had plucked it out of the package and tossed it towards the front of the aisle. No one had entered the store in little over an hour. We had no pharmacy waiters, not that it would have taken my pharmacist an hour to fill a script. No time wasters, no teenagers or long shopping customers in the store, just the employees. My manager had been in the office doing paperwork. The door leading to the office is heavy. I can hear it close from the opposite side of the store and when I poked my head into the office to find him, there he was, hunched over the store's cash reports. I told him what happened, and he shrugged and said, rather nonchalantly, Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the store is haunted by several things. Most people here think I'm crazy. They seem mostly benign, if occasionally annoying. Mostly benign? Another shrug. There's one that likes to watch people. I get the feeling I'm being watched all the time here in the office. A few other people have noticed it at night, too. The break room is worse. I've also had some pretty nasty weird near misses. I soon found out what he meant. Things firmly planted behind a guard would end up two aisles over. Keeping holiday merchandise on the risers in the wee hours is a nightmare. And when I got promoted, I noticed the feeling of being watched while I was in the office as well. Except, I get it in the stockroom, and in the back hallway by the break room, and the bathrooms as well. Things you set down in the stockroom would end up in the photo lab when you hadn't been in the lab all night. Sometimes stuff would go missing altogether. I had a set of keys that you could see me very clearly set down on a counter in the cameras in the store. When I looked back at our records, you never see anyone pick them back up 
or even approach the area in the time I left them there. They just disappeared. Then, the truly creepy things start happening. Things started flying at me. Once, I had an alarmingly tall stack of two liters almost fall on me. Cleaning up that mess was a nightmare and took way too long. Things set solidly and levelly on the top of the middle deck would teeter in my direction. Ladders, which had been planted flat and firmly on the ground, would shift precariously. I've had too many close calls to count. Once, while pulling stock in the back, the ladder shuddered and felt like it was about to tip over sideways. I lost my foothold and stumbled down several steps, heart racing. I eventually caught myself on the overstock bay I'd been pulling crap out of, but not before I caught my wrist on one of the edges on the way down. It stopped my momentum, but broke my wrist. Another moment was when I was on our tallest ladder, putting things up on top for storage. I set the box I was carrying down, and the ladder lurched forward and began to tip over. My brain short-circuited, and I reacted before I could think past, dying at work is a miserable way to go. I jumped the couple of feet from the ladder to the middle deck. Stunned, I turned around and watched as the ladder clattered to the ground. When my brain caught up to what had happened, I sat down on the middle deck, shaking. Somehow, my cashier hadn't managed to hear the noise, and I had to call the front of the store with my cell phone when I finally managed to calm down. She laughed at me for being clumsy, and I didn't bother to correct her. My most recent and scariest encounter puts me in a situation OSHA would definitely not approve of. To elaborate, my store is in the possession of two gray double-decker carts on wheels. They're made out of that lightweight, fairly durable plastic. It is my habit during our holiday season to climb up on the larger of the two and pull myself along the risers as I'm stocking and putting up merchandise. It's much easier since I can put the product that I need off to the side of me and roll myself from one end of the riser to another. The constant up and down to shuffle the ladder along problem is solved. These double deckers are fairly stable and the wheels lock into place once you're stationary. Fairly easy to maneuver and given my history with ladders, I always felt safer using the double-deckers in lieu of ladders. I was putting out some Christmas merchandise up onto the risers that we had gotten in our most recent truck. I had paused for a moment to look towards the front of the store. The doors had opened, and I was wanting to see who walked in. I was standing stationary, no movement on my part. The cart was stable and hadn't budged from where I parked it where I had been bending down to grab items off the cart. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw my cashier Tabitha suddenly book it up the aisle. I was wondering what she was doing when the cart's front wheels lurched sideways as though someone had shoved it hard. I had your traditional hokey slow-mo flash of my impending doom. I fell forward and hit my head hard on the riser, only to keep falling. With the speed of the cart, my knees would have caught the edge, and I believe I would have smacked my head on the hard tile floor first. I grabbed desperately for the riser, managed to get my fingers curled around the edge, and the cart stopped and stabilized. I felt a hand grab one of my pant legs, which slowed my movement. I managed to regain my balance when my palm finally connected with the riser. I immediately sat down on the cart. My legs were wobbly at the sudden burst of adrenaline. I was shaky for a good hour afterwards. Tabitha told me she suddenly had a really bad feeling and was rushing up to tell me that she didn't think me climbing all over the cart was a good idea. 
She caught the cart just before it pulled my feet out from underneath me. Bless that woman. I am not one to believe in Bigfoot, Yeti, or monsters, but ghosts? Oh my, ghosts are a whole other story. One day, about 19 years ago, when I was around four, I started seeing a woman, an imaginary friend if you will. She was in her 80s probably. Her name? Well, I think it was Megan. I cannot remember all of this. It is all based on what my parents remember. So Megan, while she was all around an amazing friend, she told me stories of her as a child, of her sons, and her husband. I loved hearing her stories. She told the greatest ones. Whenever I was cold, I would say, Maggie, I am cold. Then I would be warm. My parents were at first frightened but then learned to accept her as a positive in our lives. So, on with the story. After a while of talking to her, I grew an intellect and got the idea to ask her what her son's names were. Tommy Wagner, Max Wagner, and I cannot remember the last. I started telling my parents what she had told me. They knew I was not making anything up because my little four-year-old mind could not conjure up such thoughts. Then, out of nowhere, she just disappeared. I stopped talking of her and cried whenever she was mentioned. But I started seeing someone, something else. Me and this spirit were never in direct contact. But I have had some scary experiences. Like late one October night, my dad and I were putting out Halloween decor. Once we put down all the gravestones, we both heard, Why? 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 Shh! Do not talk. Clear as day. That was my only real experience with him. The voice was clearly male, my dad said. When I was around eight, we moved to a larger house. A house of horrors. On the fourth day of us being there, it was early in the morning and I went downstairs to get some crackers to see if my new pet parrot would eat them. I got up to my room and fed my parrot. He actually ate them, nibble by nibble. Then, when he was done, he spat the words, Lord, oh Lord, sat in the chair, I am aware, take me now and I praise. Then. Well, let's just say Polly had no more crackers ever since. Eight years later, when I was 13, I asked my dad what he thought of the event. He informed me of the strange experiences I had as a child. I was stunned, very, very creeped out, but in some ways touched. I asked him, do you remember the names of the three kids of Megan? Thankfully, yes, he did. Sadly, though, over the years since then, I have forgotten the third. And my dad, well, he did too. My mom, while well, she remembers nothing of the sorts, she was always out of town for work. So we found and contacted Tommy Wagner. We arranged a meeting at his house. We engaged in small talk. Then I told him more about my experiences with Megan. For a moment, he was speechless, stunned even, very, very much so. A few moments later, he said, Megan, what was my mom's name? He showed us old photos of him and his mom. I instantly felt a tingling of remembrance. I said, that is her, that is Megan, Megan Wagner. You do not have to believe me on this. But on the back of one of the photos, it said in her handwriting, Say hi to Mary for me. Yes, Mary is my name. Later that day, I went and visited her grave with her son Tommy, who, by the way, was around his mid-forties. I paid my respects 
and dropped off some flowers and stones. It is a tradition in my religion to put stones. Then I just started staring at the moon. Believe me or not, I think I saw her face in the sky. Here I am, today, writing this story for you in honor of Megan. And maybe one day, I'll see Megan on the other side. What's up, guys? Ghastly Goal here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. I bet some of you were wondering, why the heck is there a picture of a pear in a cemetery? <laughs> it was just me having a little fun with the second story. So I hope it gave you a laugh. If you liked the video, it'd be great if you would click that thumbs up button, comment, and share with your friends. Please consider joining the Ghastly Gang by hitting that subscribe button. If you would like for me to narrate your scary story, please send it to my email address below, or post it on the Free Horror Story subreddit. Please follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook, so you can keep up to date with what's happening with the channel. The links are below. And now, we must part ways, my friends. I fear you are living on borrowed time, for you'll never truly escape from the vault. Thank <laughs> you.